August 6, 1945, Hiroshima, Japan. The world is introduced to the pure destructive power of the atom bomb, a nuclear weapon capable of leveling an entire city. Whether known or unknown, this act will ripple outwards in ways we could never imagine. It would end a world war, but kick off a cold war. Nuclear weapons remain to this day a constant concern in every country in the world. So what would happen if one got lost on American soil? A lost nuclear weapon is sadly not unheard of. The United States military even has a term for it. A broken arrow incident covers a small list of accidental events involving nuclear weapons. Among the list, entries include burning of a nuclear weapon, accidental detonation of a nuclear weapon, and radioactive contamination. There is a very concerning entry at the end. Loss in transit of nuclear asset with or without its carrying vehicle. February 5th, 1958, in the air above Wausau Sound on the coast of Georgia. Air Force Colonel Howard Richardson is returning in a B-47 Stratojet from a simulated bombing in Virginia. He's carrying a 7,000-pound Mark 15 thermonuclear bomb. Meanwhile, an F-86 fighter jet on its own training mission, flown by Lieutenant Clarence Stewart, is oblivious to Richardson's flight and, not seeing it on his radar, descends from his current altitude and smashes into Colonel Richardson's plane. The impact shears one of the wings from Stewart's F-86 and severely damages the fuel tanks on Richardson's B-47 bomber. Stewart ejects from his plane and ends up in a swamp, shaken but alive. Richardson and command at Hunter Air Force Base have a decision to make. The runway at Hunter AFB is under repair, meaning that if Richardson can land, it will be on a runway far shorter than what would be considered safe. There is a concern that the bomb, loosened in its moorings, may break free of the plane and detonate. After three passes over Hunter AFB, the decision is made. Richardson will ditch the bomb in Wausau Sound. The bomb he has ditched becomes the first Broken Arrow incident where a complete bomb is not recovered in US history. On February 6th, the search for the bomb, now being referred to as the Tybee Bomb, due to the reported location of the bomb being near Tybee Island in Wausau Sound, begins. Ships are dispatched to the area, and divers with handheld sonar are sent down into the murky waters. On April 16, 1958, a letter from the Office of the Secretary of Defense to Carl Durham, the Chairman of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, confirms the worst. Quote, the search for one redacted weapon jettisoned from an aircraft on February 5, 1958, was discontinued on April 16, 1958 and the weapon is considered irretrievably lost." End quote. One big point of contention was whether or not the bomb on board the B-47 contained a capsule. The capsule is the part of the bomb used to initiate a nuclear explosion. The Air Force maintains that the bomb on Richardson's B-47 had a dummy capsule incapable of actually detonating. This is countered by a 1966 letter from the Assistant Secretary of Defense, W.J. Howard, that stated the Mark 15 dropped off Tybee Island was, quote, a complete weapon, a bomb with a nuclear capsule, end quote. The area is constantly studied for undue levels of radiation. So far, nothing has been found to indicate any kind of radioactive leak in the area surrounding Tybee Island. The official stance of the Air Force is that the Mark 15 dropped in 1958 is best left undisturbed, buried in 5 to 15 feet of silt, until the end of time. But what do you think? Is there a ticking time bomb in the waters just a few miles from Savannah, Georgia, 
or are we fretting over nothing? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Dread Unsolved. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. If you enjoy this content, consider subscribing, and thanks for watching.